everybody welcome to the blue monday podcast i'm joe i'm not going to do the normal intro because i'm actually scared i'm about to die it sounds like my roof's about to blow off my house here in... oh it's bad here as well it's just really picked up here as well yeah. oh okay yeah i'm inland a little bit here in bedfordshire but yeah it's quite it's quite scary here. Any, anyway hey. welcome to the blue monday podcast if i die it will be filmed here and you'll get to see it on, on... the revolution will be televised yeah yeah that That'll get the subscriber numbers up, Dave, won't it? Right up there. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, um, what, what is that box? There's a big, for those watching on YouTube, it's a big box over your left chair. What is that? Ember. Simba. Has it got the lion from The Lion King in it? Yeah, it has, actually. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> oh, okay, that's one. that solved then. No, as far as I'm aware, it's a mattress. Um, <laughs> bed, I'm gradually running out of space. My, my son <laughs> is about to, fingers crossed, move into a house. And, um, yeah, he's stashed quite a lot of stuff around here. And we're rapidly running out of room. And, um, yeah, that's a mattress. Don't open oh. that box because you won't be able to get it back in there. No, you <laughs> yeah, I bet, I bet you, you won't. You absolutely will not be able to get it yeah. back in there. Um, yeah, so this is the Blue Monday podcast. It's the flagship show after the Gillingham game. Um, Joe, yeah. I was doing my Saturday Super Stream thing on my, on my channel. Um, as I always do, I finish the stream, open up my phone. There's normally around between 75 and 3,000 messages in the Blue Monday WhatsApp group. You lot sounded like the grumpiest bunch of miseries ever. Was it that bad, really? We will get we did the news in a minute, but I'm just this is my perception of this game before watching the highlights. It was just a really poor game, wasn't it? We just weren't at it at all. It was um, just a lot of very like sort of Lambert ball, a lot of possession, but without anyone trying to break a line, trying to commit anyone and not creating any chances. They probably had sort of a couple of half decent chances. We had a couple of half decent chances, but it wasn't a it wasn't a great watch, was it, Dave? Conditions weren't brilliant, but it was just sluggish, yeah, very sluggish. Was, yeah, it was a tough watch and too many players trying to take the easy option and overplaying from the back again. Joe's right. It was a bit of a... So you weren't it's, you it's, weren't just being a, a, a grumpy no, old bunch? No, 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 group, not Dave. at all. No, no. It's, I'd say it's, let's put Rotherham to one side because Rotherham were really good and I wasn't at the Bolton game. It's one of the worst displays I've seen at home this season, I think. <laughs> there you go, Honestly, everybody. Right? Stay it tuned was. today to hear about like the, this. It's like the crew game, wasn't it, where it's just quite, un- you sort of walked out the ground sort of quite unsatisfied with the win and I yeah. know it's greedy, but I see you look at the bigger picture, don't you, when you see sort of McKenna now five wins from seven and oh. mm. sort of what, there's not really much more you could ask when he came in than the sort of record he's put together so far. But that wasn't great. But if you, if you go to Doncaster and win on Tuesday, then it's six points from a two very yeah. winnable games that we had to win, that we have to win, had to win, have to win. But it was, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the best. Well, no. let's go to the news um, because then we can talk about the very next game after that as well. So, Dave, it sounds like we're going to have an ungodly amount of supporters at the MK Dons game where 5,000 tickets have been sold. I went to the last game at MK Dons and that was a Tuesday night or Wednesday night. And um, that was, I think there was like three or 4,000 there. Ipswich fans love going to MK, um, Dave. But I think it's 6,700 sold now. It's unbelievable. Sold. Yeah, I, got, I knew they'd yeah, been given the extra, yeah. the extra tickets. Yeah, they're all sold. I got- I got a couple in the last in the last allocation last week. Where are you going, Dave? It? Yeah, I'm going. Yeah, you've yeah. never been there before. beforehand. Might be near me, Dave. Yeah, are you are you going? I, I've got to do the stream. I'm, I I get money. I get money to stay home. <laughs> <if I'm honest. laughs> money, so effectively, you're getting money to stay away, aren't you? That's pretty good, actually. Yeah, um, you, you look. Yeah, all come in. Yeah, I'm coming up with. I'm co- driving up with Pat. I'm picking Pat oh, up lovely. from Royston and then and then coming over. So yeah, we could do that. Interesting. Okay, well, maybe we'll do our logistical arrangements. But um, can I be that guy? I always remember Leeds selling eight thousand tickets at Blackburn and losing one nil. Can I be that guy? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it, 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 
Yeah, provided we win at Doncaster, you, you watch, we probably won't pick up three points at Doncaster. <laughs> It'll be bloody irrelevant anyway. But yeah, it's certainly going to be a hell of a following. I, I don't know when we had a bigger a, a bigger following to a league game. When would that have been, Joe? Any, any I idea? I can't think of one. I know. No, Swindon, when, we, when we beat Swindon 6-0 at both ends, we oh my had... God, that, but that, that was, was only 4 99, 5 9 was that? Yeah, yeah I, was, we had a I, was lot that, I was at that game. No yeah. Obviously, even you've got this sort of um, Arsenal in the League Cup. Again, not a league game. Oh, yeah. League but, Cup, where there's yeah. 9,000. But I don't think yeah, we've ever yeah. had this many to a well not in I'm, my memory i'm thinking to into league, milan yeah. it was probably yeah, the, into, yeah so i mean yeah, what, what would be the i mean i'm really what's what's their m so what's their average gate even well i think the last oh, three much. matches have been between seven and eight thousand people there total <laughs> i went to that stadium joe when liverpool went and uh it's because it's liverpool just standard they like had six thousand in their way and just because mm. they're liverpool and mm. it was great honestly i think there was 30,000 in there. I think it holds 30. Um, I know I know people and I know my colleagues in the Blue Monday podcast um, attack MK Dons. And I know I'm a complete apologist for him because of where I live. But it's a great stadium when it's full, honestly, Joe. Well, I've, I've been there a few times and it is a nice stadium, but it's never been full. No. It's not, not a great setting not, where it is. First, first not the easiest month. place to get to, is it? No. What's a, what's a parking like, Ben? Not great, to be honest. No, there's, um, yeah, it's a kind of like, a, we, we, we do the whole travel guide there. We, we'll uh, steal um, we'll Richard later. and Seb's funder. But yeah, um, you can go to Wag- closest Wagamama to any football ground in mm-hmm. the world. That's I think, why I met you they... there last time, didn't I? For a... Have they yes. got a car park? Uh, the, the Wagamama doesn't, but the H&M and everything. But if there's 7,000 Ipswich fans going, good luck getting parked is all, yeah. up, all I'll I mean, say to I that. I think Pat's got, couple of clients there so we should be all right oh pat will be he'll, he'll be in front of the hotel in the vip bit pat won't he but there you go um nice link dave to mk would you like to hear from scott fraser um who was according to kieran mckenna <laughs> desperate to go um never at any point mckenna said was i thinking i was gonna sign in to play that uh, sorry yeah, go in there to play left wing um mckenna will be returning to portman road you would think on the 30th of april for the Last game of the season. A bit disappointing how that's all worked out, Dave. I think so. I think I think you're right. Um, and clearly, McKenna's seen him, seen him in training and stuff, and doesn't doesn't really fancy him. Doesn't you really doesn't fancy him above you know any any of the other contenders at the moment. So um, yeah, Fraser Kane wants to play football. So I get I guess a a mutual parting for all. I mean, there's Joe. I don't know if you saw that. I don't know what the fee was, but I don't think we lost anything on him, did we? Or not, I can't. I've, apparently, we made a small profit. Yeah, I saw that. I and saw when I that, spoke so. to someone, and they, they said when we signed him in the summer, the fee wasn't anything like it was reported. And there was big top ups. <laughs> Imagine on that. Them. Yeah, there's big top ups on promotion as well. So, okay. Milton Keynes are now have lost their potential top up anyway. So, probably a bad move for them as well, losing them so quickly. But yeah, it's a strange one, isn't it? Because he. You read some of his comments, it's a bit like, well, you weren't playing left wing. You were playing inside left, really, for a start, weren't you? Yeah. You weren't up and down the touchline with chalk on your boots, was he? And But it's, it's difficult because, obviously, we've got Selena, Aluko, Chaplin, who sort of play in a similar role and are better players than him. But then you have yeah. got the thing that Selena's loan is up at the end of the season, Aluko's on a one-year deal, and Fraser, yeah, you, want, player. You, want, you want to try and get him going because he had a three-year contract. It's probably similar to sort of Joe Piggott compared to sort of McCauley Bond and James Norwood. But... Mm. Ultimately, I'll take I, him now, Dave. Any time goal scorer for anything above eleven to two in in that last game of the season for yeah, so slow, so I, slow, really. I, I, I you haven't know. seen much to impress me from him so far. He's done some nice touches, but he's not very mobile as a footballer, is he? And I think well, he again, needs I to be the team built around him. A little sliding doors moment there. He went from you know hero as almost zero. Didn't he scored a great goal? You know the really well crafted goal against Morecambe was I think could have been our first goal of the season, wasn't it? Yeah. And then me and you saw him miss a penalty in front of the Ipswich fans against Burton that probably cost <laughs> yeah. us a game. And I don't think it's only really got over that, but I think yeah he was on a sort of down from that really. I think never really yeah never really showed enough. To, you know not the paciest. Um, obviously good technique and a, I'm sure he's a good player, but. Yeah, kind of. He never, he never fit into a Paul Cook team, did he? No. When, no. when Paul Cook so rightly or wrongly is very prescriptive on what he wants from his players, you do think, well, have we ended up with a player that just doesn't fit at all? Mm. Funny you should mention Paul Cook, actually. It's almost like you've seen my script, isn't it? I was just going to ask you about him, Joe, because the Chesterfield job has come up and there was a quite sort of real link for a couple of days. It looks like that's not going to happen at all, but... Um, we'll give Dave a minute to think about it. 
Why do all managers that come and manage Ipswich end up going in lower than when they arrived at Ipswich after they've left? His, his, his stock has fallen mightily if he's been linked with the Chesterfield job. Now, that's, of course, with no disrespect, of course, to Chesterfield job. Well, I, I wonder sort of how strong... Because obviously he used to manage there, didn't he? That was his sort of first big job in England where he did a did a brilliant job there, sort of taking them up and getting them into the playoffs and and the likes. But whether it was just a short-term deal, because there's there's a lot of money in that National League at the moment. Chesterfield are big spenders. Stockport spent a lot of money. Um, Wrexham. Wrexham. So there's some serious money being spent in that league. And whether it's like just gets through to the end of the season. and Because he was also linked with Sunderland last week when it's sort of talk mm. about mm. sort of where his stock has fallen to. I, I still think he's... I think he'd be able to explain away why he failed at Ipswich quite easily and sort of how much change and sort of people are always quite receptive to the managers, sort of yeah. like Mick McCarthy. They're very good at getting out ahead of themselves, aren't they, and getting their PR campaign up and running. But I think Cook will be that. But, yeah, there's, there's going to be the concern until he goes somewhere else and does something without Liam Richardson by his side as Wigan continue to... Sort yeah. of sit pretty in League One. I think he's gonna he's gonna need to get in somewhere. And he's got he's gonna have to choose his next job very wisely, isn't he? Because if he has another bad job like he had here, then he's gonna be in a bit of trouble. I got yeah, that I completely think... wrong, Dave, didn't I? I? I had his stock as really really high when we got him, and I thought we were we were punching, but yeah, yeah and I don't think his stock is. Da- I don't think his stock is damaged beyond repair, is it? I think we spoke about no. this before as well. You know, it's not as if he's left us, you know, haven't been in the bottom three or anything like that. He just, you know, with the with the money at his disposal and the resources, he just he just didn't achieve what he was brought in to achieve. Um, yeah, I, I think he'll pick up another job somewhere, be it at League One or who knows. <laughs> the way uh, apparently, is. Dave, my Reading theory isn't going to work because oh, was that um, one of your Red, theories, Reading yeah. can't fire Paunovic because um, it will cost them too much to pay him off. And they've got this um, agreement, the, the agreed whatever it is with the EFL more, this season. A, so more int- a, a, more interest, a more interest was the link of another one of our former managers with Sunderland. I would like go on then. Give me your, give me your thoughts on that then, David. <laughs> um, well, we've all seen the Amazon. We've all seen, seen, mean, we've all seen <laughs> the yes. Amazon. We've all seen the Amazon documentary, and I mean it's a balmy club. It's certainly a balmy club during those periods. So nothing, nothing would, nothing would surprise me there. Nothing would surprise me there at all. And um, certainly, sort of having a bit of an adverse effect on them yesterday. If the re- if the result of yesterday is anything to go by, so yeah, would that would that mean the need to get someone in on a yeah even more urgently? Probably, probably does. So nothing would surprise me really. Joe, can um, can a Irish Roy Keane shaped leopard <laughs> change their spots in in ten years? And um, it's weird with Roy Keane because a lot of people have been asking me about him this week, and it's it's I'm totally split down the middle. If you ask Sunderland fans, he's a good manager. If you ask Ipswich fans, he's yeah. a terrible manager. And then he didn't do anything for ten years um, in terms of a no. I, I, I just think his, his job, failings you know? though was sort of like the man management side of things, wasn't yes. it? Where and. 10 years is a long time when these footballers have become even more, <laughs> um, sort yeah. of, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I'm looking Insulated, for. I'm sure, I'm sure rash, everyone knows rash. what I mean. Yeah, and exactly. exactly what you mean. Earning yeah, good money, sort mean. of the social media side of it. Yeah. There. I think he's, he's, it's going to be very difficult for him with his style that he's had at all the jobs and including Ireland. There was always a talk of what had happened when he was there with sort of John Walters and people like that. And then it's sort of, I don't think in 10 years he's, his man management is going to be more suited to the newer generation of players. So it's going to be much, much sort of less suited to it. So I'd be, I'd be surprised if he was a success there, if he were to go there. But it wouldn't surprise me if he went there though. But yeah. no, people just yeah. fall in love with the name, don't they? And yeah. He just seems to have been cast now as saying <laughs> silly stuff that just funny, Michael Richards take, then laughs at. <laughs> well, perhaps he'll take Michael Richards as his assistant. Brilliant. <laughs> That's you fun, imagine. Isn't it? Um, <laughs> big, big Mika. Yeah. No, I, no, I can't imagine that, but there you go. <laughs> right, we've procrastinated long enough. Um, let's talk about this game that got the blood flowing quite so um, strongly in the Blue Monday WhatsApp group. With wings more crisp than a James Norwood finish, ribs meatier than Sam Morsey tackle, and chicken tastier than Wes Burns, favourite is Britain's tastiest chicken. And as a listener of the Blue Monday podcast, you can get 20% off by entering BM20 at the checkout. Order direct from their menu at chicken-ipswich.co.uk. They'll deliver anywhere within a 2.7 mile radius of the store. And if you're not quite as local as the Bond family, you can click and collect. The store is located just off Hadley Road. Favourite, Britain's tastiest chicken. 
So Ipswich versus Gillingham. And interestingly, Dave, Neil Harris pipes up at Gillingham. Neil Harris, who had applied previously for the yep. Ipswich job. Neil Harris, who I remember scoring at Portman Road for Millwall and winning there. Um, and, well, I remember a 2-2 draw where they had about eight big chances and didn't win and Bart saved everything. And I remember a really dreadful, maybe early January in the in the um, heinous season, then winning uh, Tom Elliott even scoring as well. Uh, okay. Putting Steve yeah. Morrison on the right wing against Miles That's, Kenlock. Oh, he, That's exactly what he did. Yeah, he, yeah. Him, didn't he? he came on and absolutely took him apart. That's right, yeah. And I remember yeah. us all texting, Morrison's right. playing right wing on about 46 <laughs> minutes. This yeah. is not going to end well. Paul Lambert saw it in about the 95th minute, I think. Uh, yeah, with Jonas Knudsen sitting on the bench, the sort of international <laughs> left back yeah. sitting on the bench. Yeah. Oh, how serious. Um, he managed to get Ben Thompson, um, who he, he didn't sort of sign him. Ben Thompson's contract at Middles, uh, Middlesbrough, at uh, Millwall, they, they sort of cancelled it and he's turned up there. So, we the fabled... stretched off yesterday, wasn't he? So. Yeah, the fabled mythical new manager bounce was was on in this one for sure, wasn't it? Here is your Ipswich team, uh, Dave. Uh, Walton in goal. The back three stays as was. Danassian, Wolfenden, Edmondson. The wing backs are the same as well. Thompson and Burns. Carroll comes in for El Mazzuni in central midfield. Sorry, Evans comes in for El Mazzuni with Carroll in central midfield. And it's a bit of a rejig of the, uh, however you want to describe it, the front three is basically a front two in this game with a with a 10 and a front two, as opposed mm. to in the previous game with a nine and two support. And it's Chaplin off Piggott and Norwood. Um, so Selena and Bon drop out. Your thoughts on the 11 and two up top, Dave. Well, you know, like always like two up top. And I was pleased when I saw the team. I think I was pleased that Piggott was going to get his chance. I think um, certainly most of the fan base, I think, had been sort of wanting that for a, for a time as perhaps Bon has gone slightly off the off the boil, certainly, certainly goals-wise. Um, I think we all assumed that Sonia Luco was injured, <laughs> um, which ultimately turns out apparently not to be the case. Um and you know, especially was he just not surprised. selected a Luco then? I hadn't. Sorry, was he just not in the eighteen? He wasn't in the eighteen at all. No, no, no. but I mean, was he? I, I assumed he was injured. Was he not? No, he was. No, apparently not. I thought. I think I read some at the day and became a game out and said no. He okay. was. Um, he was fit, but just didn't. Um, wasn't. Wasn't selected, which is a bit of a surprise for me. Um, but yeah, the rest of the side. I mean, obviously Evans back alongside Carroll. I don't think I necessarily had an had an issue with that, given. Given that you know the midfielders that were, that we have, and certainly I think Backinson last week didn't really pull up any trees at Sheffield Wednesday, so yeah, I wasn't too too perturbed with 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 that as on the face of it. You agree with Dave, Joe? Yeah, I, I'm surprised to see Piggott, and I was sort of pleased to see him getting a chance, but I don't think Bon has done a lot wrong recently. I know he hasn't scored as many goals lately, but three game week, Joe. Yeah, he's got the best yeah. sort of probably all round game of our strikers, but. I don't, yeah, that, that was sort of my main takeaway from it. It's good to see Chaplin in. Surprise! I thought Selena did okay when he came on at Sheffield Wednesday. That he didn't, he didn't play. But I say this, it's much of a muchness really when you look at the sort of uh, that sort of front three, and it's going to be fluid till the end of the season where you sort of just try and get somebody in form and play the form out, don't you? But, but no one's really in form there at the moment, are they? <laughs> well, um, well, we can talk about Chaplin and Norwood, perhaps. Um, and their numbers in a little bit, but not quite to the extent Bomb was. Um, on the bench, Sladke, Burgess, Backinson, um, Edwards, Selina, Bon, and Jackson. So still fairly well set up. Joe, this is the Gillingham team. Um, and yeah, QPR Loney's Ahoy, I think. Uh, Chapman in goal, Masterson, Aimer, Tucker, Tutonda and Mackenzie, O'Keefe and Lee, Thompson, who we mentioned, Oliver and Lloyd up top um and joe they're struggling down at the bottom of the table not a lot to be scared of there other than the mythical manager bounces there no not at all and you sort of looked at the team on paper and you think who in there would even sort of get in our squad really i think sort of a dane oliver was looked good again yesterday i thought he was yeah. i thought he was really poor right. when we played him at their place but that was his first game back after a decent absence and yeah, he was good i thought he was, i thought he was really good yesterday and really really did well but other than that there's no one that you'd even have in there as an option really is there let alone a starter no no um dave this first half um 
Uh, Oliver Lee has a free kick tip around the post. Evans, nice free kick across. Norwood can't connect. Yeah, Piggott, probably best chance of the half. Um, yeah. Heads over. And Thompson, 25-yarder. I don't think Walton was getting to. Do you want to take me through the first half, Dave? Sounds fairly even. Yeah, it's not much. I think we had one one shot. Was that where Bond, good, um, sorry, Burns, good bit of play on the edge of the box, picks a ball up, right foot, and sort of hits it across Chapman. <laughs> Full stretch, pretty you know, expect him to save it. Looked like from where I was, I was right behind it, it was creeping in at the far post. Pretty decent save, but pushes us out. And it comes to Thompson, our, our left back, who's just following up and just yeah, just gets it all wrong. Perhaps perhaps a forward may have had a bit more awareness and rolled it in, but he sort of just skies it over coming the bar. Coming at him fast, uh, Dave, isn't it? Sorry? Coming at him fast, isn't it? It's coming at him quickly, yeah. He's just he's just reacting there. But other than that, I mean, I think the most disappointing thing, Titsonda, their left back in front of us, got booked very early on after about 10 minutes. And he thought, OK, this is it. You know, just get the ball to Burns and absolutely go at him. You know, a real, you know, because he's got to be on his guard. And we just never did that. We just never did that at all. Um, a lot of sort of very safe passing, really. And I think Joe said before, before we even came on air, just no one, certainly first half, yeah, just no one there to break the line. You really missed. I thought yesterday we really missed Morsey yesterday. You know who has who can pick the ball up in midfield and you know and drive, drop his shoulder and drive. You know and break those break the line in two. Number but, one for yeah. pass completion in the squad, Dave. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, we it's we just, just his forward runs, isn't it? That that we've missed. Yeah, no, it is. It is. Like when you look just, at the, um... it's, it's quite clever. Because he'll drop his shoulder and go when people are expecting a pass. It's almost like a rugby feint where he drops his shoulder and and you know makes that makes that run. Um, and I really thought we missed that yesterday. And yeah. going back again to what Joe said about Celine, I thought, yeah, I thought, yeah, Selena, come on, you know, certainly beginning after none, no creation at all first half. I actually expected him to be on perhaps fairly early in the second half, but in fact we didn't see him at all. So yeah, no. Not much, and um, yeah, they cope. They cope fairly easily, really. Yeah, a lot of possession. It's in ridiculous amount of possession. First off, Seven, 70, 71, seventy-one percent. I mean, yeah. And I think we had one shot on top of that. Well, that was the the burn shot that the keeper um, that the keeper made the save. So some good delivery. A, a couple of good crosses. The moments a really good delivery from that free kick you mentioned. Mm, brilliant. Yeah. Good. yeah, excellent. Um, but I think Carroll yeah. was taking the rest of the corners, wasn't he? Evans weren't taking corners. Yeah, yeah he was sort oh, of taking some floaty. Very, very floaty ones, but <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you know the sort. But um, waggon like, but um, it was um, yeah, no, not a great, not a great first. Half. What, do you, what, what do you think, Joe? Yes, similar to Dave. Really, we just we yeah, we badly missed Morsey. And I think when you look at the first goal we scored at Gillingham down at Priestfield, and it's yeah. Morsey getting to the byline and firing across into Norwood to convert Evans or. Um, Carroll just would not get into that position. They sort of, they're both sort of neat and tidy and move the ball along. But Evans was sort of sitting and Carroll was one pushing onwards. But he's he's not that sort of player. He's not a player that will carry the ball. He's he's one that keeps it ticking around and keeps it moving. And I thought he did okay in that regard. I thought he didn't have a bad game. I thought he passed the ball quite well. But there was just there was just very little. When you look at, I sort of looked at the position map of the players and sort of the the forwards are on top of the central midfield and it's just. They kept dropping back in, and sort of poor Joe Piggott just did not seem on the same wavelength as any of his teammates. He just, he just looked lost out there, really, didn't he? And there I was, felt for him a bit. Yeah, yeah he just, he, he everything didn't. he did went wrong. Really, not everything, but he just seemed yeah. incapable of got away of from him getting on the same wavelength, controlling the ball properly, and just moving. He just looks a player totally bereft of confidence at the moment, doesn't he? And it was just, but, it was just all a bit safe, you know. And Evans and Carroll, you know, Carroll looks lovely on the ball, you know lovely left foot but it's all a bit all a bit safe and easy and again it's all in front of them again and as we said very much it's harping back to those games I hate to say it under Lambert perhaps even a few under Cook as well where yeah a lot, a lot of possession but just no penetration whatsoever just not moving the ball quick enough we just no. don't mix it up enough really I just find no. like when the we're trying to play out from the back and they've got a really high press and they're pressing really well just, at some point surely someone's just got to take a decision just to clip it over the press and try and yeah play from somewhere else but it, it, it got a little bit sort of football by numbers almost like this is what we're going to do and we're, we're not going to change our way for anyone where well, you need to mix it up sometimes don't you you need to mix it up to keep them honest yeah. yeah and it's one of those where if the opponent is happy to seed possession you think oh great we're keeping the ball so much and playing into their their hands as they try and transition which joe they did manage to do in the second half um 
Oliver hits the post. I watched this back a few times. I do think if it's inside the post, I do think Walton's saving it. But it's a really good chest down and effort by Yeah, it doesn't Oliver. look like Actually, it's going had, in, really. You would yeah. have had a better, really good view of that, wouldn't you? I was right so, in live, and it, 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 was a, it was almost a surprise when it hit the post because it looked like it was drifting wide. It was one of those. Mm. But... Re really good effort, though, wasn't it? To yeah, really try good, and yeah. chest it down. To be, fair, um, to be fair, I missed that. I was struggling back my half-time hot dog, and I missed it. <laughs> um, got, oh, I'll, by the way... Um, David was papped by by our friend Bits, and he, uh, it sounds like I'm about to mock David or Bits, but seriously, check out Bits on Instagram or Twitter because he really kind of captures the whole He's very essence good, of fans and friends and whatnot um, appearing there. I don't know what his social media is, to be fair. But Turbo the Sailor, I think it is. Turbo, Turbo the Sailor, Sailor. yeah. Check yeah, it out. Man, um, I met him for the first time, um, obviously, in the greyhound, outside the greyhound yesterday. Yeah, yeah he's top, a great top guy, and he, he really gets the whole match experience in his in his mm, photographs. So if stuff. he does point the camera at you, do what Dave did, raise your raise your glasses. Well, it was you... black and it was a black and white photo and it was appropriate because it was it was the, the dregs of a pint of Guinness as well. So he had it spot on. <laughs> That's tremendous. Um Joe, um Lloyd hits the post from this set play. I think it deflects and um spoons up and hits the post and then Edmondson poor pass out from the back and Ooh. it gets slid through the middle, I think, by Thompson and Oliver's in and Edmondson redeems yeah. himself. He you, recovers you, his own error, yeah, but yeah, you, Edmondson you were there. struggled looks at like, the back. Looks like Gillingham were um, the more likely to take the lead from, you know, those three chances I've just mentioned. Yeah, po yeah possibly, probably. That, that we, we, didn't, we didn't seem to be hurting them at all where we were sort of our own worst enemies. Like when you see the, that I say, the Edmondson pass where he gives it away and then does brilliantly to recover, but it's a real, he, he just gives it straight to them at that point. And a couple of times, just say his passing radar from the back really wasn't on. And the Nassim didn't have a great game in that regard. But I thought Wolfie was, again, probably our best defender out there, which is sort of promising enough. But I don't know, we, we, we're not playing that well out from the back. The midfielders don't seem to get on the ball and move it. And we, I don't know, we're just a bit samey. <laughs> Dave? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think, I don't get to say it, but Edmondson was playing better early on the season in a back four. <laughs> mm. <laughs> which is, which, uh, well, we finished, we finished with a back four yesterday, didn't we? So. Yeah, I guess we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, perhaps because he wasn't perhaps he wasn't on the ball quite so much and asked, asked to bring it forward. However, leading on, Ben. Well, yeah, um, I, I assume you're going to make a comparison to Mark Venus getting nice and narrow from left centre back and fizzing the ball in. If that's completely not, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't clip it in with his left foot, does he? But <laughs> no, quite yeah, far. I mean he does. For once, he does sort of. He, he gets himself in a really advanced position. Crikey, he was in the middle of their half, and I think Carroll slips the ball to him, and it's a good ball. He gets his head up and clips the ball into right on the edge of the D. I think on the on the edge of the box, and it's a shout. I didn't realise at the time, but. Um, I've seen somewhere written, um, I think it was a Gillian um, tweet or something like that. I saw that when he, um, when, when, when Chaplin controls it, there's a bit of a shout for a potential handball there. Like it almost runs up his arm or something like that. So, you know, a game with VAR, we might have seen a different outcome there, but that just falls for him absolutely perfectly. And it's a great finish. It's half volley, left foot, brilliant technique. Keeper's got no chance. Yeah, so good two finish. Home games and the only where the time... only difference is. Go on, Joe. So, yeah, two home games in a row where the only difference between the sides has been a bit of quality from Connor Chaplin in the final third, isn't it? Yeah, Joe, yeah, and, and a, a good point. Yeah, a really good point. Yeah, good, great. Really, really class class finish. But only time he got himself in that position all game and look what happens. Mm. Yeah, Joe, you're, you're taking... It's weird. You, I just brought up the um, touches. Only Edmondson, I believe, had more touches than Chaplin in the game. So it's getting him... On the ball in the right position rather very, than on the ball from touches, the goal, yeah? He was quite deep. A lot of those yeah. touches, quite deep and quite wide, I would say, as well. Yeah, I, I agree with Dave, Joe. Forward, it's, a, yeah. it's a great goal. He's Before the keeper's diving, that's that's past him, isn't it? And it's yeah. a difficult one to control and then hit early. I know I've been a massive champion for Chaplin literally since, you know, the second he walked in. But um, it's, a, it's a tremendous goal. It's... Um, Nine goal contributions in 13 starts. So Bond's got 14 and Burns has got 10. You were speaking about players in form. Do you know what? Actually, Norwood has only got a better goals per minute ratio, Joe, than Chaplin now. 
Is he? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say it's it's a, it's a really good goal. Like I, thought, I think Edmondson does well because he, he he could play that ball early, but lets it open up a little bit more before he plays it in from a decent position. Mm. And I like say it it's, it looks a miscontrol from Chapman, doesn't he? Sort of that's spoon up, for it, it? and it spoons up a bit, but it just lands perfectly. Perfect. But yeah, brilliant finish. Like, you, no keeper saving that is it? Like I say at the Accrington game as well. He's just found that yard of space in the box and he's a he's a he's a technically a very good player isn't he watching but he, oh my god he must be quite well he's quite frustrating to watch it sometimes i think someone was saying i think craig was saying last week he was trying a lot of flicks and tricks and stuff up sheffield wednesday and none of those were coming off he tried one or two first half and they didn't come off but his first what, touch in that is exceptional sometimes and a really tight he's quite squat he's, he's quite short quite yeah. squat um he's his tiny, first touch really, is, isn't is exceptional but yeah could be a bit of a fr- frustration to play with, I should imagine. Well, there, was a, there was a hell of a lot of sort of attempted one-touch football in the yeah. final third yesterday. Yeah. All the team, and it wasn't coming Man, off he's a lot He's ready of it. to do it, Joe. He's you, you guys are sitting telling me, oh, it's a bit samey. He's ready to ping one around the corner. Oh, he's good enough to do it. Yeah. So he's good enough mm. to do it, isn't he, Joe? Mm. Yeah, oh, he is. And I say, I, I think that's where we're trying to get to with McKenna, but mate, it's just not coming off at the moment. But like I said, there's a lot of one-touch back heels trying to get it in the final third, and it, and it breaks down quite often. And we'll sort of see. And I think if there go time, goes back. We get better at it, which we should do if that's what the way we're trying to play. And we try and, and that's what we're working on in training. But it's as quite frustrating at times. Yesterday, it's quite congested to try and play yeah, through. Really and, tight. Yeah, I think it goes back to your point, Joe, what you said about Piggott not quite being on the same wavelength because I don't think he picked that hardly picked up any of those. And when he did, it just bounced off him, certainly in the first half. Mm. Um, final reflections on the whole thing then, Joe? It's just one of those ones you just take the points and move on, really, isn't it? It's not, uh, like I say, it wasn't, it wasn't a good game. We were lucky to get away with the win. And I, I think it's sort of, sort of quite clear that McKenna's had quite a bit of luck really in, this, in the sort of first few games we've sort of if you think sort of the Wickham game uh, sort of a, that was a good one nil victory but one it was a tight game Accrington was a tight game that we just edged I, f- I didn't think we played very well at Wimbledon to win there and so it's sort of like five wins in seven which is a brilliant record four clean sheets I only conceded four goals since he's come in but I don't think we've probably played well enough to get the amount of points that we have done obviously it's good that we do and you sort of there's not really a game that you look at now. Like you look at Doncaster on Tuesday, and you think that it's not as it's quite an awkward game now, isn't it? Because we're not we're not playing we're not I playing mean, brilliantly, are we? We we get some decent results, which is what we need ultimately. But at some point, we are going to need to start playing a bit better. And like when you compare the Gillingham game away to this one yesterday, it's sort of night and day, wasn't it? But yeah, they were terrible. They were terrible on the day, though, weren't they? When we played yeah, them they away, were, they yeah. were really, really bad. I mean, they just let us play, basically, didn't they? They certainly, you know, that say like the new manager influence yesterday. They're certainly at it yesterday for sure. Much, much better organised. Um, right, let's have a look and see because this will parlay into our Doncaster chat. Um, what else went on in League One and this uh, continual? ridiculous high number of points being scored up at the top is going to um, <laughs> continue. So Rotherham uh, won again. They beat Accrington. Wigan played in the Cup. So um, I haven't done my maths, but I assume they would top any points per game table, even though there's six points behind Rotherham. Um, fact check me on that, actually. I don't know if I'm right about that, but you yeah. still think with three games, three games in, hand, don't in hand there. Um, MK, who are the opponents for the 6,700 Ipswich fans, have gone up into third. They were behind and beat Lincoln. Sunderland, um, who we've already mentioned, and we're going to mention Doncaster in a little bit, lost at home to Doncaster. So hopefully we can read absolutely nothing into that. Oxford won, um, I believe, very, very late on against 10-man Pompey, which yeah, the game now means has been delayed for a long time as well. So you sort of look yeah, at the some... results, and then it was a 96 minute in a very delayed game. So I think most people had, had it really half five, that. yeah, half five yeah. goal that one. Yeah, um, uh, Sheffield Wednesday beat Burton, but look, they're not even in sixth. If we're still looking at the playoffs, Dave, sixth place is now projecting 82, 82. <laughs> I mean, it's impossible. There's no way sixth will have. 82 uh, points. I think it's oh, 78, 79, said, though. It could be high, though. Um, yeah, you, yeah. If, if, just to get to 75 points, if you look at Oxford in fifth, they only need 22 points in 16 games. That's not even That's not even one and a half that's points 1. a game. 5, is it? isn't it? Yeah, yeah 1.375, is it? Something like that. But you, you're looking at it, and you expect, even if 
they're going to they're going to pick up a decent amount of points, aren't they? I think I, like I, said, I think it's going to be 78, 79 points is going to be needed to get in that top six, which means we need well, like I said, we, we need like 30, 35 points in sixteen games. That's the sort of form. <laughs> I mean, we need. two two points a game will get us to seventy six, won't it? I mean, it's, I, I don't yeah, think this doesn't enough. look like it's going to be enough, Dave. <sighs> no. it's just mad, isn't it? I know. And look, and look, you know, we, again, we said this last week. Look, we're chasing now. Now we're chasing Wickham, who what three two and a half weeks ago were top. It's, yeah. I, I don't know the exact numbers, but this happened in 2014-15. I'm pretty sure Wolves missed the playoffs with like 77 points or something. I don't know how many we got in. If you think when we're in the championship, yeah, like I say, we got 78 points, finished sixth. Yeah. yeah, so I think that's what it's, that's what it's going to be like this did year. Did Wolves get the same amount of points and miss out on goal difference I think we or something? Did. I think we did. Done. Yeah, Brentford had yeah. the same yeah. amount and they beat us on goal difference. Was it Dar- yeah. Derby? Derby lost, didn't they? Was it Derby? Derby lost to... They lost 3-0, didn't they, on the last yeah. Of the season? Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's it's going to be a lot of points to get the playoffs. It's, it's going to be, like I say, we, two points a game, I don't think will be enough. I don't think 76 points will be enough for us this year. So we need a, well, like I said, we've, what, we've got seven, five wins from seven so far. So we've got... Uh, um, like Surely some point. teams, Joe, are going to start tripping over each other in that top six. It can't, I, I just I can't, I, it can't be that high. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd be amazed if it's less than seventy-eight. Yeah, mm. but it, yeah, I'm saying it can't be eighty-two. But yeah, no, it, no, it, won't, it won't be eighty-two. But I, I think it's going to be seventy-eight, seventy-nine. And I like say if we have the amount of points that we've got since McKenna's come in, sort of two point one four points a game, that takes us seventy-six. Another thirty-four points. So yeah, it's only to seventy-six, isn't it? <laughs> no, sorry, seventy-eight. Seventy-eight. To, yeah, so that's what oh, we need, f- really, isn't it? Yeah, and then and then you're hoping that that sixth drops down and if someone goes on a bad run and some teams start beating up on each other. But yes, perhaps there's an argument that we just focus on um, what we're... And we should say, um, and you've mentioned it a couple of times, Joe, Kieran McKenna's Ipswich are in good form. That's 15 points in seven games, which by any standard, we all know two points per game is is excellent and normally gets you automatic promotion if you can do it across a season in a in a 24 you know a 24 team league um but yes the the old too little too late maybe um be I mean, being i think that's right Dave. we look i think we looked at the same so we looked at a snapshot of the first seven fixtures of the season and all predicted oh yeah 15 points yeah that'd be, that'd be <laughs> decent yeah we'll be happy with that and we got what three yeah three or Stop four it. but yeah you look because yeah. I, I like i said when cook left i was like we we're, we're, we're struggling. We're, we're miles and miles out of this at the moment. I don't think some people, because of the game in hand situation, it was all a little bit was in flux. It's like, I don't think people realise how far off we were and how much work was to be done. And I say, and I think obviously it's proven right to bring in McKenna as a that type of manager. Because I think if you'd have brought in a Neil Warnock or someone to try and get you up that year, I don't think he'd have been doing any better than 15 points from seven games. And that 15 Probably points right. from seven games is leaving you eight points off the playoffs still, isn't it? It's, uh, Dave, it's a mammoth task. It's, it's almost an impossible task. Dave, in those seven games, four clean sheets as well. What do you read into that? Well, two of those two of those clean sheets against Gillingham, one against Wimbledon. I mean, we haven't, you know, put, put the Wickham game, I suppose, to one side where we've, where we've won. Um I know Joe said have we been lucky, but I suppose we've been lucky. I feel you've just urinated on my strawberries there, Dave. (laughs) (laughs) I was excited about the four clean sheets, but you just yeah. Well, you know, but yeah, you've got to take into context who they who they were against. To be fair, I mean, Gillingham certainly in the first game offered nothing. I don't think Wimbledon. I suppose Wimbledon did actually. Wimbledon were good. Yeah, perhaps got away with one there certainly before we scored. so yeah, we've had a little bit of little bit of fortune, I think, and maybe some more fortune than than poor old Paul Cook had a bit. Yeah, you know. and I think um, there was definitely an element of that that Cook didn't. Yeah, no, not really. Luck, perhaps he didn't was... get the run of the ball and with injuries, you know. Without, well, we'll perhaps go on to injuries in a minute and talk about Burns and Co. But yeah, maybe he didn't quite have the run of the ball and the run 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 of the luck with injuries and stuff. But yeah, it's, I mean, yes, ball clean sheets, encouraging, but. Yeah, so I mean, I just look at the goals. I know you know there's no shortage of goals. We've scored 48 goals, but crikey, sort of. I remember going back to the, after the Wickham away, and we were like we were like leading goal scorers by about six or seven we goals. Were, I think, weren't we? we? We're yeah. flying, weren't we? And then obviously Bonner Bond's goals are dried up, etc. But yeah, strange, strange season, really. It's very strange. Do you want to 
Do you want to come in on what Dave said about the injuries, Joe, particularly with, as it pertains to Burns? Yeah, he's, it would be a big miss if we... But I, I think we're probably a little bit sort of more set up to deal with his absence now in the way we've set up is that you, you just put Vincent Young in for him, wouldn't you, on the right-hand side and you don't lose... It, you might lose the goals, but you don't lose the sort of attacking thrust and the pace down the wing. But I saw someone post on TWTD, which I haven't fact-checked, so I don't know if it's right, but it sounds about right, that with Burns in the team, we're getting 1.8 points per game. And when he's not starting, it's 0.5. <laughs> really? Yeah, I, and it is. and yeah, get that. And wow. that was that was our poor run under Cook, wasn't it? When Burns wasn't fit, and he he's been, he has been so important to us. He's probably been. It, it looked like a dead leg player. though yesterday. It looked like a dead leg. It's a quick it looked like turnaround, no, though, I, Dave. I don't know. He opened it. It looked like not. But then he just right, half time, went, wasn't it? But then he yeah, that was before half time. And he sort of stayed on, and but then he sort of went down. What five, six, seven minutes mm. into the he second half? Groin, so that, didn't if it, it was a dead leg, yeah, you're right. That's a strange one. But at first, that's what it looked like. But I mean, if that what it is, that's what it is. You'd think. Maybe just a one a one game, but yeah, hopefully it's not a recurrence. It's probably event, almost an argument that you just rest him Tuesday, yeah, leave him at yeah. home, yeah, make sure he's right for the upcoming okay. games because we yeah. should, if we play well, we should be able to beat Doncaster without Wes Burns, shouldn't we? And but it's, yeah. it's risky doing that, and it's, it can backfire. Like when if we went to Wimbledon and we rested Bond, we rested Selena, and you sort of went with Jackson Norwood up top, and. <laughs> And then, but we got the win, so it's okay. But these are the, these are the sort of decisions that can make you look very smart or very stupid. But they're all judged in hindsight, not not sort of mm. the reasons why you make it. If you go there, make a couple of changes, win the game, then everyone's happy. You go there and you lose, and it's like, well, why didn't he play? Why didn't he play? Why didn't he play? And you sort of got a chance for egg on your face. But I don't think McKenna is going to be scared of making the brave decisions when you look at what he's done already what he did at Wimbledon he's talked about this big squad he's got and wanting to wanting to utilize it looking forward to the Saturday Tuesday Saturday and we've got a squad he, which he seems other to teams at this league don't have Joe, that Saturday Tuesday Saturday doesn't he? he seems to be really really into you know these three game weeks and how he's gonna get well, around them doesn't he well I suppose sort of working at sort of Manchester United previously that is what that's what separates these big teams from the rest in that league, that they can go and play the European away games at the weekend. They and, do it all season, Joe. Sorry, yeah, European games midweek yeah. and come back. And so I remember many years ago, my um, where my wife was working, they sponsored the England football team. And I got I went to a press conference with Fabio Capello, who was, this was just before the 2010 World Cup. And we were talking about the difference in sort of quality between the leagues. It's like the sort of League One to Championship is... Uh, one step jump, sort of championship to the Premier League is a two step jump. But being a Premier League team to a Champions League team was like ten steps. He said, <laughs> "That's that's why the players and the big clubs get picked because they have mm. to do so much body management, quality, and just be out, being able to go sort of three times a week, which is difficult." And I think that's where we've got the squad where we can rotate without lessening the quality on the pitch. And and we've got to be able to utilise that because Doncaster they, they they can't make free changes and bring in like if you think Burns go out for Vincent Young, Piggott can go out for Macaulay Bond, Chaplin can go out for Burst and Selena, Evans can go out for you know, sort of a Backinson or or someone like that. You you can make these changes without downgrading the quality. Um, yeah, I just want to give a thing of what Joe out. said. Think of what Joe said about England, Ben. Unless you're Steve Ball with ten tons of gold, of course. <laughs> I just want to give a shout out to Boreham Wood just on my screen here. Bournemouth nil, Boreham Wood won. No way. Wake up full time um, after Bournemouth um, had a very, very busy transfer window. So big, wow. big shout out to Boreham Wood. And, and when, when I used to live in London, Colney, I used to go and um, go and shop in Boreham Wood and go to the bank there, just um, inside the M25. There. So I, basically, I'm responsible for their success here. Shall we go to some questions? <laughs> Right, thank you as ever for getting your questions in. Every flagship show, the shout goes out from uh, Richard down the Blue Monday Twitter, at Blue Monday ITFC. Go and follow. Uh, Dave, uh, Paul asks, assuming Morsi is back for the MK game, uh, who is our starting midfield? Um, and give your thoughts on Evans and Carroll. Maybe you've already done that, Evans and Carroll, but who's the starting midfield against MK, assuming Morsi returns? The other midfield two I would have thought would be Morsi and Evans, I would have thought. In a, um, Joe, there. this is Alex. Um, how stroke why did we make such hard work of that? Can I add on to Alex's question? Um, ca- to what extent is it down to a mid-low block from Gillingham as well? 
difficult one, isn't it? I'd, we we just didn't we just didn't get I, we just didn't move the ball quick enough, and I think that that sort of solves your issues if you move the ball well and quickly and forwards and. No matter, it's always hard when teams sit in against you, and a lot of teams come to Port Road and do that. But we've got to, we've got to deal with that, really, don't we? We've got to learn to beat teams like that. And we, I thought, so we, for all for all the talk of this, we did win yesterday. We did beat Accrington. We did sort of we we have won all our home games under McKenna, haven't we? That's three runs out of three at Port Road, and whilst it hasn't always been pretty, it, it to 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 play one of those games where you beat the other team four five nil. You, you need them to take part in that game either by being dreadful and allowing you to or by trying to give you a game. You just constantly catch them out where, it's, I say, I just I just don't see that we're going to have many of those games at Portman Road over the rest of the season against the lower teams in the league because they're all going to come and try and stop us. And they've done their home. Clearly, they've seen, seen the, where the vast amount of our goals and chances come from and it's that Danassi and Burns. They've them Maxis, recently, Dave, it? as well. They're just doing a job on that, aren't they? Mm. Yeah. Sorry, Ben? I was just saying, and we played them recently, so they've got a very good sample of how we play literally about a month ago or something, wasn't but, it? As Joe of... said, that's a perfect example. That first goal against Gillingham, thinking back, the Norwood goal was probably my favourite goal of the season, actually. It was unbelievably yeah. good, wasn't it? It just shows what you're capable of. Um, Dave, we'll stay with you. Has anyone heard any... This is Will. Has anyone heard any rumours of next year's kit deal, given this is the last year of the <laughs> I, Adidas deal? I must admit, probably Joe's more I favour this than I am. No, I'm not, I, I'm I not sure it is no. the last year of the Adidas sure. deal. I, 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 think we st- I think we've signed an agreement, a longer one with Adidas, haven't we? I, th- I thought we extended it a couple of years, but I'd, I'd be very surprised if we go away from Adidas. Hopefully we won't, but I think there, there'd be rumblings about it now if, if we were. Sort of How long have we been with Adidas now, Joe? Since 2014, isn't it? I think it was the 14, first year with yeah, them. Yeah, right. so. 14, 15, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, eight okay. years. Yeah. Um, we'll go back to Dave then. This is our friend Mullet. Um, points mean prizes in it. Mm. Um, at least we will be mm. closer to sixth come the end of the season. Uh, so all those drop points will sting again, eh? I think he's... Have, have we I covered think, that in our... I think we're pretty much... Point I think we're pretty there? much... we pretty much covered that, haven't we? Unfortunately, yeah. Remember, start the season, 100 points, 100 goals. Oh, Stop it. So far away. Can I just say that 100 points, 100 goals thing? Um, with my championship hat on, no no one's ever done that. Not 100 no. points and 100 goals. I think Not Reading ready. got no, 99 goals. Ready. No, they got 99 goals. Wolves and in 2000 and... No, Wolves 13, got... 14 in, in League One, I think. Oh, in League One. Yeah, okay. okay. Wolves under been Nuno. There's seven or eight got... teams that have scored got 100 points full stop. Yeah, in, yeah, all quite. Three years. It, in the Championship, um, Newcastle under Hewton, Reading under Coppel, Sunderland under right. Peter Reid. Um, Wolves got 99, didn't they? Bournemouth, no, they've got 98 goals. But yeah, so 100 points, 100 goals is, um, particularly at Championship like level, is... Myth. Is it a myth? It's, it's one of those. Um, Dave, we were talking about it. If anyone's there on uh, Twitter, there he is. Uh, I don't David know. Diamond has come up in the, um, someone's with... commented underneath, Noel, is that Michael Caine? Do you take that as a compliment, Dave? Oi, yeah, absolutely love. Bloody absolute film legend that he is. You, <laughs> I, film icon, absolutely. There you go. Go um, on, okay. he's to blow the bloody doors off. Uh, this is from our, uh, well, one of our own, Craig. Um, Dave, uh, with yet another important summer window coming up how was our new recruitment de- uh, department done with its january acquisitions i think we all agree that um i think we all agreed that walton was probably the best signing that we've potentially made all made all season i mean he was very good not not he was overly tested yesterday joe but he was good again yesterday wasn't yeah, he you know for crosses catch, he? he comens for crosses and he just you know you look at it, oh, caveat, that's Dave, a keep, sorry to we haven't always Dave. had keepers like that with the ball's lofted anything oh that's a keeper's ball yeah he's got it yeah he just looks so assured and stuff so he's made a hell of a difference i think it's more the players that have gone out so clearly a few fraser and a few more going out on loan or off the wage bill now so I don't know, maybe one eye on... Uh, I think someone made a comment last week about Sheffield Wednesday away, you know, losing that game. And perhaps they think maybe it is too far too far away. Playoffs are too far away now. And they are have got one eye already on, um, you know, on next season with a slight sort of clearing of the decks um, as the other players that went on loan out on loan um, last week. So, yeah. Interesting, like Craig went to the shareholders AGM on Friday, didn't he? And he said that... Mark Ashton specifically said that Luke Wolfenden was going to be out in January. He was they, gone, were, wasn't they, he? Were, they were looking to move him along, and now 
he's been brilliant since McKenna's come in. And what would that have been? Paul Cook, wouldn't it? That would have been him out and Che Dunkley in or something like that, just to yeah. carry on getting more of his ex players in. And I, and I just can't, it amazes me how damaging, how much damage was allowed to be done and getting rid of the sort of Downses, Wolfing, sort of Wolfing and being allowed to go, well, Dazelles and players that's... like that, that we just pushed out the door, really. Downs was inevitable, I think, wasn't it? Downs was inevitable. I spoke to... Um, I don't think he was, though, because I was, I was not? saying this the other day, and that if you think, like, for example, like Sam Morsey, we've managed to get him to drop down into League One and pay him X thousand pound a week to build a team around him. Well, why didn't we go to Flint Downs and say, look, we'll, well build a team around you? And he'd be challenging you. for the playoffs with Borough as well. Yeah, we still, we still had another year's contract on him. Ultimately, we sold him for wow. one and a half million quid. Well, if he's as that good you just keep him don't you and let him run it down and get a tribunal at the end of it because we he's under 23 he, wasn't he? i'm saying whether his head was turned or something seemingly he wanted did he uh, seem to me he just wanted away maybe mm. but, I think so. but, that, but that's but, but uh, your point you make is good that's perhaps how he how he reacted and how he's mm. handled by cook in the yeah. first did he did he want away from kirk or did he want away from exactly um when i was met, met a qpr fan in london on thursday and he was saying that Zell was been looking really good. Certainly, well, up until he was suspended, you reckon there was four games prior to that, and he was almost first name, you know, first name on the team sheet pretty much for all those four games. Yeah, he said he's, yeah, just he's looked, at Jeff, times he's looked absolute quality. Jeff Hendrick. I mean, so I don't reckon he's going to be starting um, for the next. They got, I didn't, I missed that. They got Jeff Hendrick. Yeah, Hendrick on loan. They got Field in there as well. I like Ball. I I don't know whether he'll be, but we'll keep we'll keep an eye. I mean, I hope he is. Obviously, but he's well you know. thought. As he said, he's he's certainly he is well thought, thought of. of. He's yeah, well he, thought is, of. he is well thought of. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, right, let's try and bang through. I want to get all these asked. Okay, so quick answers for these ones. Um, Dave, FPL Tractor, do you think the club will release the DVD of that game to help Insomniacs? <laughs> uh, hopefully, no. <laughs> um, Tony, this is more a comment than a question, but I'll read it um, anyway. Uh, McKenna is clearly working on first time touches around the corner, which was sadly dreadful today. I like the yeah. idea of changing tactics when needed, but I'm not sure the players actually understood what he wanted. Oh, how we missed Morsi's direction. I think we yeah. agree with that. Blue Soap, is this a question or a comment? Uh, need to get ourselves together for Tuesday now. Donny is scrapping for points. We'll come on to this in a second, Blue Soap. Um, doing well to keep pace with the top six. Hopefully we won't start dropping points. Is there a question in here anywhere? Gary, um, played great and got nothing in the past. Played dire and got the win. Uh, concerned about the next two aways, though, especially... Um, not a question in there, but we've read the comment. Uh, right, okay, Joe, Sticky74. Elm is better than Carroll. Discuss. I, I think it, probably playing alongside Lee Evans, I think he'd give more impact into the game by just getting a bit further forward and having a bit more attacking intent, the ability to carry the ball. He's got a shot on him as well, where Carroll is more... He needs to be the sort of Evans role, doesn't he? Sort of sitting deeper, intercepting the ball, getting around and moving the ball quickly. But yeah, I, I don't think Evans and Carroll was a particularly good partnership that they, they didn't sort of bring out each other's strengths. So I wouldn't mind a scene. I think El Mazzuni is probably the most similar to Sam Morsey who could play, play the role that as he has been playing recently as in that sort of number eight, who's getting ahead of the ball and trying to make things happen going forwards. I think El Mazzuni is a, a much better style fitting for him than Carol Backinson or Evans is. Okay. Um, Rob comments three much needed points now on to Tuesday. I think we can all get behind that. Uh, Dave, this is Chris, our, our friend Chris Rand. Um, Pickett's performance was poor, but far worse was um, his utter lack of awareness of anything around him. Chris's words, not the Blue Monday podcast, well, <laughs> uh, which was largely why Norwood had about one touch in four or five minutes. Why wasn't he changed at half time or earlier? Talk about Pigot and Norwood in the front two and Pigot generally. Yeah, look, I felt he, he wasn't, and we said that, you know, the, the flicks around the corner and stuff like that, he just perhaps wasn't on the same, certainly not on Chaplin's wavelength. Um, I'm not sure you can, I'm not sure you can blame Norwood's display totally on Piggott. However, one caveat, yeah, Norwood probably had his best spell of the game, ironically, when Bond came on after about 80 minutes, you know, he, he, yeah, chasing down, holding on to the ball, the ball stuck with him a bit. Maybe he's just seeing, seeing more of the ball. But, um yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Piggott, Piggott, Norwood yesterday, yesterday didn't didn't work, and I would fully expect certainly Bond to be back in there on Tuesday. I would have thought. Um, a bit of breaking news. Uh, yeah, we're I recording. Saw that. Yes, eight thirty-seven um, on Sunday night. Fire damage at Playford Road. Wow. The club, the club is disappointment disappointed. Excuse me to announce fire damage to part of the Playford Road training ground 
facilities. By the way, as we're talking, this literally has gone on the website five minutes ago. I think Richard's posted. Joe, look out the window. You see any flames? <laughs> yeah, I can't see anything out the window. Yeah. Um, a marquee used for player activation and fitness sessions has been destroyed. Wow. The club takes great pride in its local community, and we see ourselves as one of the many organisations leading on that front. We would therefore be extremely disappointed should it be discovered the damage caused was intentional. The club will await a report from relevant authorities and will make no further comment at this time. So it's probably best that we make no further comment either. But that's yeah. Well, I have noticed that Marky. It's, it's quite um, new, Joe. isn't it? It's just um, as you, it. it's on the Bent Lane side, isn't it? When you see that it's sort of a tent up, I haven't sort of had no idea what's going on in there. There's obviously player activation there, but what yeah, does that mean? guess it's just getting the muscles firing before they do their training sessions so okay. there's sort of less room for sort of soft tissue injuries would be a guess i don't know exactly but yeah just a little warm-up thing so yeah really disappointing and hopefully there's if there are culprits they are brought to task for it and just quickly dave on what joe's just said um i don't know if i'm reading too much into it but kieran mckenna in his post-match interview sorry we're flitting all over the place today spoke about i think he used the word robust and that the fact that the squad um, was all ready to go um, in preparation prior to this game. Are, mm. are we seeing an, Im an improvement in the kind of general fitness levels? And like Joe says, perhaps uh, it's something... uh, Yeah, I think, yeah, that's a good point. I think so, because certainly uh, uh, for his first couple of games, I remember the wick, um, yeah, I remember the first couple of games that the players looked out, some of the players looked out on their feet. So I think, yeah, we're seeing we're seeing better levels of fitness now. And also seeing just general fitness. Okay, Burns aside, we haven't really got that many players out. Well, obviously, <laughs> obviously Coulson and Nolan have been moved back, moved back and moved on. But um, we just haven't really, really got any players well, out. Coulson played long... 30 minutes for Peterborough yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We haven't we haven't got any players on a long-term injury. Well, how the hell, how long has it been since we've said that, mm. for goodness sake? Season Years. upon season. So, maybe, um, maybe there's an element that McKenna's sort of buying into the sort of fitness more than Cook ever did yeah, because I, think I, so. I, they, I, think so. I don't think there's think it's any secret that there's sort of a clash between cook and andy rolls is there's a sort of yeah head of performance i think cook has said as much that he wasn't yeah. responsible for the fitness training the players weren't fit enough for him so maybe yeah i, I guess mckenna's buying into it a bit more and and the squad is is paying off we're, we're in a very good position as a squad it's just the problem is we're performance. sort of 10 points behind where we Back. need yeah. to be and yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, there's just so much to do from here yeah. Agreed, agreed. Right, like, we're coming I'm sure up... Chris Rand will be listening, but I'd want to see what the sports club oh, stats says where we I, are at I the moment. I don't want to know, Joe. A very small oh, yeah, yeah. chance. <laughs> yeah. Basically got to win seven out of every eight games now, probably, or something ridiculous, mm. isn't it? But yeah, there you go. Um, right, we're coming up the hour. Let me just bring up, um, so it's Doncaster next. And this is a very, very odd run uh, because <laughs> <laughs> they've beaten away from home Milton Keynes Dons, who are third, and Sunderland, who are second in their past one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight games. They've lost the other six games to Morecambe, Fleetwood, uh, Wigan, fine, we get that, Cambridge, Plymouth, yeah, fine, Rotherham, 5 0 as well. Um, I, I, I don't quite know where to pitch Doncaster here, Dave. Um, I think McSheffrey's got the job now full time, hasn't he, since Wellens? went out but surely they'll be confident after going to Sunderland and winning well you'd think so and you would think perhaps as a team as a club they'd be certainly up for it after what happened at Portman Road back in September you know the 6-0 yes. game so I'm um, just more added sort of fuel to the fire really and um, yeah great superb result at uh, superb result with Sunderland yesterday so um, yeah they'll be on a high so yeah, again, another game where perhaps Morsey, Morsey missing, heaven forbid, might be uh, yeah, might be the telling factor. Let's hope not. Can we write off the Sunderland win as a complete freak because Sunderland are weird at the moment, Joe? Well, I don't yes, know. I thought, I thought yeah. I'm glad you agree. Well, they're, they're, <laughs> they're both away wins, which is interesting as opposed to sort of yes. anything at home, isn't it? So hopefully that is that they're, they're setting themselves up in a way to plan a break. And I don't think MK... I've got a brilliant home record. I think they're very much a much better away from home than they are at home. So I don't know. Don, Doncaster are uh, they, they're going to give us a test, aren't they? They're going to be challenged. They're going to be up for it. But oh, they lost five 0 to Rotherham at home last week, didn't they? So Rotherham are obviously very, very good at this level, and we need to make sure that we go there and put in a put in a good yeah. performance to get the win. We've got to be on it, haven't we? We really have got to be on it, on it from the start. You know, um, 
we certainly weren't against Wimbledon, as Joe said, and got away with it a bit. So, yeah, let's hope we're... And, yeah, and hope for obviously a bit more than we put in at Sheffield. Well, OK, perhaps different class you're playing against. You're not playing against the likes of Bannon and Luongo in midfield. But, yeah, we've got to show a bit more, haven't we? Well, there we go. Um, final thoughts, Dave. Bit of a strange podcast. Um, 15 points in seven games. But given that top <laughs> six disappearing off into the distance and the, the kind of general sense around the performance um just just give me your last final summary in uh, 20 30 seconds yeah it was just a bit of know so we would say a meh sort of game yesterday wasn't it as we all you know obviously you're pleased with the three points but as joe said you come away feeling oh no you know we've almost gone almost gone backwards when you think about the performance at gillingham and and perhaps even the wickham but you know the wickham home performance and stuff so yeah i mean doncaster away on a tuesday night we have got to put it in and stand up because yeah they they'll they will be at it so yeah as long as we look you know, take get the three points and then it just sets it up for everyone go well most of them going to most of us going to mk on saturday joe final thoughts yeah i, th- I think obviously the, the performance wasn't great but you got the win which is good but I th- it's just a bit deflating when you see like we've won five games out of seven which is a probably the best we're probably the form team in the league and then you look at the league table afterwards and we just made no we just made no ground up at all in that time all no. we've done is sort of treaded water really keep our kept us kept ourselves in touch so it's just it's just feeling like the season is just starting to peter out a little bit and and it's going to take something very special but you win tuesday and then seven thousand fans go to mk and you get a win there on saturday and all of a sudden you're you're looking at the table thinking oh actually it is it is starting to move our way because it it will do if if we keep winning but it's just yeah a lot to do we need to win probably what's the 16 games left we probably need to win 11 of them you know, you get through these two games, and I think I think I've got it right. I'm not sure there's a midweek game after the MK game. I'm not sure there is because I think the next two home games after that are Burton followed by a midweek game at home against Cheltenham. I think. Mm. Yeah, so Burton, Cheltenham, Morecambe, Fleetwood, Lincoln, and then <sighs> Pompey, Oxford, Plymouth. Oh. Oh. Um, it's the last ones that get me. Let me just go around the corner on that screen. Rotherham, Wigan um, are. <laughs> Games number four and three, uh, then crew, and then Charlton Scott Fraser. Yeah. Um, at the end. Anyway, we'll get to that. I think we were fairly optimistic. I kind of like to finish it on Joe's comment there of you know get a win against Doncaster and then seven thousand Ipswich fans celebrating at MK, all heading to Wagamama after the game. There you go. This has <laughs> been the Blue Monday podcast, the flagship show. Uh, post Gillingham, please get your comments in. If you're watching us on YouTube, um, please remember to hit that subscribe button. You can follow us also on Instagram as well. Go and follow over there. We always have people at pretty much every single game that Ipswich ever play and photos and whatnot going up there. We're on Twitter at Blue Monday FC, ITFC. You can follow all of us individually um, on Twitter as well. Say goodbye, David. Bye, Ben. My next task is to take the mattress out of the box and try and get it back in the box. Uh, say goodbye, Can we do a YouTube Joe. unboxing? Yeah, I will. I'll do some YouTube unboxing. We, we can unboxing. keep rolling. We can keep rolling. Say goodbye, yeah. Joe. See you later, guys. <laughs> Bye from me.